Acer Aspire laptop uh, E1-522 model don't know what's wrong with this one uh, let me plug in the charger and see if we get any lights um, I see we have a battery charging light on the on the front edge you can't see that um, but does it turn on I have blue light and the screen went dark so it's been uh, it's been given power but it hasn't got any signal to show a picture yet don't hear a fan or anything and I've got no picture but uh, it doesn't turn off right away if I hold the button down it's turned off okay let's get up close with a torch and see if maybe it's a backlight issue missing backlight Don't see any uh, any um, splash logo or text. Um, plug into external screen. It's a good start. Uh, there we go. Cool. So no boot device. So we're looking for a blue box in the middle of the screen. Uh, when I'm looking up close, uh, I was kind of looking at the top left where they normally get some um, press any key to restart no boot disk found sort of message um, I will look again but yeah I'm thinking uh, backlight well I really can't see anything up close where it, where it should be on the screen so I'm thinking maybe we've got a, a, a cable fault uh, to the screen it's not carrying a signal maybe there's a break in the cable would be one option um, uh, or maybe maybe uh, an issue with the graphics chip um, what does it got on the sticker does it say separate graphics or is it just uh, Radeon HD graphics so I think it might have a separate chip um, but it could be an issue with that uh, and the external um, I'm not too sure how, how the external ports tied in with the internal LVDS, but uh, we'll have a look. Well, not a lot going on this side of the board. Pretty basic on this side of the board. And doesn't have... Hmm, no, it doesn't have a separate graphics chip. It's all part of the processor, so... Uh, that's a good start. You can't even see through the fan. It's that plugged up with the uh, fluff. Probably find it uh, maybe it overheated a few times and it's actually just permanently ruined it. Let's see if we can figure out what feeds the video port versus what feeds the LVDS uh, connector. It's got to be all coming out of the processor directly I think. And if you have a look at the screen flex, it's not corroded or anything. The connector is nice and clean. So I managed to find a schematic. And, uh, and it would be a bit tricky to just sort of guess our way through it because the board is so minimal. Uh, it's not like we can just pull up a uh, IC um, and check a data sheet and work out what's going on. It's all out of the processor. So... Um, go for a schematic and uh, the connector is labeled uh, LVDS1 so we'll do a search for that and there we go so now we can see what's happening on the pins of the connector and uh, so there we go so what have we got on the bottom at pins 30 that end of the connector we've got our DCB bat out. Now what I noticed is um, it's called out. So we've got battery out, uh, backlight on, out. Uh, it's it's not out from the panel though. It's it's out from the source and, and and into the panel. So don't worry about that. But that's that's our main power in. Um, and 
heading on up we can see pin 23 we've got LCD brightness control uh, 22 is backlight on so we should have a signal there to turn it on uh, a bit further up we've got something called DPHPD0 I'm not sure what that does there's LCD self test uh, that's interesting I wonder if uh, that just goes to a test point I wonder if we um, Mm, we'll see if it's got a voltage on it we might be able to ground it and just see if the LCD comes up in some kind of self test mode that'd be cool I've never seen one do that um, then we've got 13 and 12 have our LCD VDD so that's going to be our voltage uh, for the panel voltage okay so the, f the bottom three are probably going to be backlight voltage uh, supply uh, and then we've got pin 10 down to pin uh, 2 are all of our uh, signal lines and of course they are in pairs uh, LVDS um, sends their signals in pairs um, complementary pairs so uh, negative and a positive going signal that gives a nice uh, noise free signal and being able to drive it at low voltage it's less affected by uh, noise doing it that way so you'd have um, you'd have a square wave uh, would come along on the positive line would would be a positive going square wave and then the negative line would be a negative going square wave and the difference between the two determines if it's a one or a zero um, and that's how they do that I believe but uh, Let's go to the scope and see if when this is on those signals are present. So we'll start at the bottom which is our pin uh, 30 and uh, we've gone up off screen that's 5 volts per division we're up at 20 volts so we sort of expect that for uh, a main backlight sort of feed. Uh, then if we carry on to 23. That is our first trace that we come to. It runs down to here to this resistor and we have very little, nothing going on there. Let's go to what's 2 volts per division. Uh, there's nothing going on there. Okay so then the next line after that is going to be backlight on out which is 22 which comes down to this resistor and we have nothing on there so of course nothing's going to be happening because we have uh, no brightness control no backlight on control uh, so what else pin 17 HDHPD uh, sorry DPHD HDH you know what I mean 17 17 comes down to here test point there nothing going on there um, next up is LCD VDD uh, it comes off these caps okay so we've got our 3.6 volts and if we go to the data pins which you can see are individual pairs of of traces and uh, if we poke on one of those there's really not a lot going on there either so we're getting no drive to our LCD all we have is power which is why we can see the panel go dark if you're looking at it, it goes dark because it becomes it gets turned on but it has no data to display so it stays just dark and there's no backlight signal either so for some reason processors decided not to feed information to the panel but it is feeding out of our RGB port which is interesting uh, so what kind of things would cause a panel to not show anything what about the lid closed detection circuit what if it thinks the lids shut so it's not going to show anything as a result 
If you have a look, what I've noticed on a, on a few laptops now is uh, down along the front edge, there's quite often a Hall effect sensor because there's a magnet in the lid and as it closes it comes down and it sits over the top of this in close proximity so uh, this will detect the presence of a magnet and uh, change a signal to suit to tell the system that the lid's shut. So if we had a pin at the top pin there it's got no signal on it and a pin that's got voltage and that one's got a voltage so if we grab a magnet and bring it near we'll see what happens there we go move it away come back and you see the signal being pulled to ground so we know that is working but uh, is it getting to the processor I'd almost guarantee it, it follows the trace under to this resistor and then over here so we'll check on that test point there so we'll probe on that and bring our magnet over good and that's working so it's getting through the resistor so that's not a problem and then it's diving off to what needs to know for either PCH or something um, like that so that could be our problem if that doesn't see the signal at the other end it's not going to initiate the screen so um, where is the screen driven from let's dive back to the schematic and find out where the backlight control and whatnot signals come from here is okay if we follow backlight on out and that goes to here whatever this chip is this chip is our looks like possibly our system management controller what does this say down the corner oh yeah ITE 8587 that's going to be our uh, system management controller <laughs> um, this takes in signals like uh, temperature uh, sensing and controls the fan there's the fan there um, it'll monitor the power button to know when that's pressed it will uh, do what else does it do checks the presence of the charger plugged in um, turns the hard drive on and off uh, what else does it do bunch of other stuff so that's where our backlight signal comes from anyway uh, where is the pros uh, where is the um, oh. where is the LVDS signal derived from ah let's delete the four okay so this is going to be our CPU display display section okay so this is driven directly off the CPU and we had no signals there why 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 there's a something backlight enable signal and a something backlight control signal what does that go to the backlight enable okay so the processor puts out a signal 
um, backlight enable to the um, to our system controller chip and that chip then sends out a um, backlight on signal to the screen. So the process is only going to, uh, well the screen's only going to light up when the processor says hey I've got data. Is that how that works? Um, there's HDMI. HDMI? Has this got an HDMI port? Oh it does too. I wonder if that's working. Okay, so VGA, I wonder where the VGA is fed from. Alright, where was I? I just had a phone call, lost my train of thought. Uh, so let's have a look. So here we go, we've got um, the main CPU has a display section and uh, just having a read of, in green it's basically telling us what goes where so here we can see APU CRT pointing to this area and we can see we've got our um, digital to analog red green and blue signals uh, and horizontal and vertical sync so that's um, that's supplying our VGA connector um, then we have uh, uh, APU uh, EDP so I'm not sure um, EDP, um, that's display panel, um, and then up here we've got HDMI uh, there, so I um, wonder what the A stands for. And over this side we've got the um, HDMI, um, so those signals for HDMI, and uh, display panel again, these are our data lines for the display panel uh, and we've got one more over here uh, one pair over here separately so what do we need to make that all work why is the VGA independent in this box up the top left we can see oh pff, can't highlight everything um, in the top left we can see HDMI enable signal uh, and a APU reset and an APU power OK so um, and that's fed off the one one point eight volt uh, line it looks like um, and down here we have uh, a three point three volt line which goes to APU as well We've got APU core control signals here. Hmm, HDMI enable. I wonder if that is a, is, is a power line that comes from the um, monitor when you plug in an HDMI, HDMI cable. And that's how it knows it's plugged in. Um, what do we got over here? Here's a APU dig on. Uh, it's a uh, buffer so it just um, supports the signal coming out that's LCD VDD enable well we know that's working because um, uh, we've got VDD on the LCD we've got our 3 volts and a 20 volts there's a 1V8 signal here goes into bypass clock low just a block diagram of how things work. Let's have a look. Uh, where's the video? Here we go. The APU. Is that arithmetic processing unit? Um, maybe. Okay, a quick look. <laughs> it's AMD's accelerated processing unit. There you go. The APU feeds. Uh, HDMI and display panel seem to be tied together. So I did uh, scope the HDMI port and there is no signals there either. I was looking at this um, power 
block diagram shows the flow of where the input goes through all the regulators etc and I had a thought what if somehow this uh, needs to know that there's a screen attached in order to make an image and when I scoped the HDMI socket there was nothing uh, there no no signals so I um, I plugged in a HDMI monitor and I got an image now actually that might go back to my theory about what, what am I looking for this uh, here HDMI enable comes from one uh, one point eight volt that's a power rail in the motherboard I don't think that's power from the HDMI port what is this port called let's just go there and have a look HDMI one <laughs> like LVDS one I should have known that uh, HDMI one there's the socket we have data clock um, another data and clock line 5 volt HDMI line now that is looks like it comes from the laptop not from the monitor uh, and then uh, here we go HDMI con HDMI detect so when there is a voltage that comes from the monitor uh, to turn on this transistor by the look of it which then creates a high on this line which tells the system that there's an HDMI screen now plugged in so if we find that signal HDMI detect yeah that goes into our processor as well funny it shows an out got the arrows coming out of the processor but it coming out of here I'm, I'm sure it comes from the screen so it knows it's plugged in because without that this transistor stays off so its base is being pulled to ground through this resistor uh, well shared resistor it says do not stuff which is probably should say no stuff which means that resistor is not there well that's what we're looking at so okay so there is a way for it to know I've taken a bit of a closer look at this and I wanted to know what this line here does so DPHPD0 so that looks like it's coming out of the connector and it goes to here I don't know does that mean high performance display maybe uh, high active so we can see by this resistor that the signal is normally grounded it's normally zero which means that the display is going to have to make that pull that high and what have we got for resistance there's a hundred K to ground and 1.2k to wherever that goes so what that means is um, because this is such a higher value uh, a positive signal from the display is going to pass through and not also be pulled to ground because uh, this resistance is lower so uh, let's follow this and see where that goes that comes into here DPHPD I think and that's the arrows are pointing left that's going into the chip I think this signal needs to be present to tell the processor that this display is attached and active I think we have a LCD panel uh, problem it will be on the control board on the uh, uh, in, in the screen unit itself uh, either that or the loom has broken in between so the signal can't get uh, through so in the hinge itself maybe the, the if the wires finally broken uh, that could be stopping the signal coming through and I was right you can see as I've started peeling this back we have broken strands sticking out there
it's definitely let go and it looks like possibly more than one uh, there's a that looks like an earth wire is that wrapped in the braid so this is conductive this cloth uh, through here is conductive it acts as a, a shield and, uh, and we have a number of broken wires in there let's cut that open I didn't see any of this Oh, look at that, that's actually part of, I don't think that's a ground conductor unless that's let go at two ends, that's interesting, I mean it looks like it would be, but uh, I would expect it to go all the way down through here, brown one, and a light brown one, a dark brown one, those two there, those two there. Usually when you get power, a power one breaks and of course it touches this conductive uh, wrapping which draws a lot of power and suddenly gets really hot <laughs> and things start melting together like that two brown ones there seem to be stuck together. The white one's broken, that yellow one's about to go, so it might as well do that as well. Uh, what else is going on? These look okay. It's funny the rest of these look okay. Yeah, that's just, that's funny. The, all the rest of them seem alright. And uh, only one, two, three, four are broken. We could patch them back together. Not a hard job, just a pain in the butt job. So what I do in instances like this is uh, trim them at different lengths. So you can see we've got the yellow one is the longest and then the white one and then the brown one there actually one of those could probably do to be a bit shorter and uh, yeah so so they're staggered so that it's easier to insulate them when we um, wrap it all back up if you had them all at the same length all of the solder joints will be beside each other and it can also cause for uh, cause it to um, with the solder joint being a little bit fatter than just a single strand so it can pack out that one area as well uh, so it helps with that too so I might just trim those brown ones back a bit and stagger them more same at that end there they're all, all staggered so I will need to find some thin wire I don't know where I'm going to get some just yet I'll have to have a look through my collection of garbage Well, I've found a connector that'll do the job. Well, I should say wire. <laughs> it's got um connector at each end, of course, but it's out of a laptop and it's already pretty fine. It's the closest I'm going to get to match that, so we'll run with it. Um, yeah, this, is, this, this connected the motherboard to a little PCB on the side and this particular laptop that, that had the USB ports on it, I think. You'll notice that um, a couple of these lines, or th three of these lines, are twisted together. And they are the three data pairs. And they're twisted to ensure um, signal integrity and, and further uh, be resistant to noise, external noise. Yeah, there we go. That's close enough. I'll uh, plug it in and give it a quick test, make sure that everything's going to work and we haven't missed anything. Uh, I mean, it's possible that the panel itself is damaged, as uh, if it was that wire was touching the shielding here, uh, then whatever's supplying that 5 volts could easily get burnt out if it's not designed to supply a lot of current. 
Alrighty, we're ready to go. And I hit the power button with a set of tweezers because that's how we roll. I'm just <laughs> bridging the contacts on the connector. I don't have the thing plugged in. There we go. Now, it's not the first time I've seen a broken cable, so... Okay, let's uh, wrap all that up and make it nice and insulated and uh, put it all back together. So I ended up wrapping it in capped on tape uh, because it's really thin. So you get a bit more flexibility than you would out of insulation tape. If you had a couple layers of insulation tape, it would get quite fat and bulky. Uh, so I use capped on tape and it's also nice and sticky so it shouldn't unravel. Well, there we go. All back together and... Uh, working quite happily so um, I mean you probably could have just dived right into looking for a problem in the flex if you didn't have access to a schematic but a uh, little bit of thought thought process into the lines and where they go and what they might do and uh, helped us work it out so hope you learned something and uh, thanks for watching <laughs>